you know, being an artist is kind of an affliction. It's a calling. It's, it's like being called to the priesthood. And it is a kind of priesthood in a way. If you don't do it, if you turn away from it, um, in my case, when I, when I turned away from it, um, I became very unhappy and, and started having, um, struggling with clinical depression. And until finally it kind of reached an apogee when I was uh, 26 years old and I had a toddler in the house and, and I was, I was really at a point where I was, I was, you know, suicidal. And I checked myself into a psychiatric hospital and I would say I was in there a day or two before I started writing again. And I haven't stopped since. So finally, I'd had this screenplay that I'd started in college, never finished, and I'd made this promise to myself when I started writing again, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish everything I start. I said, okay, I'm just gonna finish a screenplay. And um, I sold it, you know, and, and um, sold another one. And you know, not a lot of money, it was low budget. It kind of, you know, just doing that and doing the insurance and making most of my money, I mean, the, all of my money as a health insurance broker. This went on for about 22 years. And I was writing the whole time. I realized that, you know, as, as I was approaching my 40th birthday, I thought, you know, I told myself, once you hit 40, you know, it's, it's a young man's game, it's Hollywood. And uh, I'm going to start writing novels. You know, I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to stop being a dramatist and become a novelist. And But I come from a family of, like, really sore losers. The Knoffs are really bad people. You don't want to play Monopoly with a Knoff. You don't want to play tennis with a Knoff. If we're losing, we flip the board, we throw the racket. We're, we're real, you know, we're not... We're not fun people when we're losing, you know. And I said, oh, you know what? No, no, I've never really gone out and really tried to sell myself. I'd been really just, you know, taking workshops and just writing and doing a tremendous amount of writing in complete obscurity and just trying to hone my craft. And But I'd never really done the thing where you go out and start trying to sell them. And um, so I said, I'm going to just, I'm going to take one more shot at this. And I, I created this website called Unmovies, which was sort of dedicated to you know, first of all, all the scripts I'd written that had never been, you know, made. Uh, I got a call from a guy, um, and he had said, we want to read the, you know, my boss wants to read the rest of your script. Out of the clear blue. He worked, this was Robert, a guy named Robert Keobot. He was a development executive for another man named Scott Winant, who was a multiple Emmy winning director. And he had told Robert, you know, I'm tired of doctors, cops, and lawyers and I want to see something different. And Carnival was like really different. He read it, called me into his office, said, I need a Bible. I said, well, you know, what do you want, the St. James? I, I had no idea what a Bible even was. And so I created a Bible and then we went out to, um, I mean, to shorthand it, went to HBO and, and they, um, in their, you know, hubris, decided to commit you know, the largest budget, you know, it was, a, it was we had the largest pattern budget that anybody had ever had on TV ever, um, with m m tons of moving parts on this crazy idea by somebody who was a health insurance broker and made me an executive producer on it. And uh, I kind of hung on by my fingernails, but I'd come to it as a fully formed adult. And so, and I had skill sets, I'd run businesses and I'd been an entrepreneur my whole life. And I managed to hang on for two years. People say, well, you know, do you have any advice for breaking into the business? And, you know, my breaking into the business story is, it's like, if you somebody coming, do you have any advice for, for getting wealthy? It was like, oh, good, go down to the corner drugstore and buy a, buy a lottery ticket and start scratching it. I mean, it was a, it was an amazing confluence of just luck. And, uh, but I was ready when it happened. I mean, it, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have worked if I hadn't been ready. And so I, and I'm, I had to be able to run a room, and I had to be able to work with other writers, and I had to be able to deliver compelling material week in, week out. Um, so, uh, you know, it worked for me.